Let's look at an example where you have a quadratic equation on the bottom, but when you factor that, you have a complex roots. This is where we do this really different than a math class. If you take a differential equation, you'll notice you try to make it sine, cosine, combine them. But for circuit, we look for an easier way. I know this will give me complex roots. How do you know that? You solve this quadratic equation. To solve it, you go s has to equal minus b, negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 16, minus 4 times a times c, that's 20, divided by 2a, which is 2. So if you solve it for s, that's negative 4, plus or minus 2i, or j, whatever you want to use, divided by 2. So that's negative 2 plus or minus 1i or 1j. So if you take this and factor that, you end up with 3s plus 6 over. When you bring them to this side, they become plus s plus 2 minus 1i. s plus 2 plus 1i. Since this is really linear, the bottom, S is, has a power of 1 linear, the top is always going to be 1 degree less than this when you do a partial fraction. So if you do a partial fraction on this, you will notice this is K over S plus 2 minus 1I. Notice I didn't say K, K1. Normally we say K1 plus K2. But instead of K1 and K2, well, we found out that the second one is always going to be the conjugate of this one. Always. And the equation I'm going to use, once I know what K is, there's an equation for circuit. It says if Vs is equal to, let's say this is A angle, theta here divided by s plus alpha minus j beta then we know the second one is going to be the conjugate of this and the conjugate of a angle theta will be a angle negative theta s plus alpha plus j beta if you have that then your solution v as a function of t, it's always going to be 2 times a times e to the minus alpha t times cosine beta t plus theta, whatever theta is. And theta is the angle that comes with this when this minus right there. Now when it's the plus, so you're going to use that angle with the minus. So if I go back to this problem, I need to know what k is equal to. If I know what k is equal to, that will give me a and theta, then I'm done with the problem. So how do we find k? Here we go. And to find k is you want to take your vs and multiply it by this one. So it's equal to s plus 2 minus 1i times Vs, and Vs is this one. And notice this one cancels this. And you want to find the value of this when S equals. Now, what makes this one 0? It's actually negative 2 plus 1i. Notice where my finger is. Right there. If you let s equals negative 2 plus 1i, that will make that 0. So that's what you want to put there. So what is k equal to? It says simplify 3s plus 6 over s plus 2 plus 1i 
when s equals negative 2 plus 1i. Oh, can't see it. Here we go. So let's plug these numbers in, see what will happen. K is going to be 3 times. Here we go, negative 2 plus 1i plus 6 over negative 2 plus 1i. Let's add to it 2 plus 1i. I'm not sure why I close the parentheses here and open them because that's all the bottom. 3 times a negative 2 is negative 6 plus 6 that's 0 so I have 3i so on the bottom I have 2i and for this example If you plug it in, the i's will cancel. That's equal to 1.5, really angle 0 here, because there's no value for it. So if we know what that is, can we find what v as a function of time? So for this example, it's going to be, here we go, this is my a. Let me just highlight things. This is my a in the equation. This is my theta. My alpha, in case, in case you can't see it here, this is my alpha. And this is beta here. So this will be 2 times a e to the minus alpha t cosine beta t plus theta. Let's plug in these values. 2 times a which is 1.5 e to the minus alpha which is 2t cosine beta, beta is 1, 1t, one plus theta, which is 0. So if we clean that, that's 3e e to the minus 2t cosine 1t, or just t, u sub t. Is theta always going to be 0? Absolutely not. I just made this problem without thinking. And I just lucked out with theta being zero. Sometimes that angle is 50 degrees, 90 degrees, 40 degrees. If that's the case, you go plus 50, plus 60. Let me try another one since we have time before they kick me out. I only have. 10 minutes, 12 minutes for each video. Let's say we have Vs equals S plus 7 over S squared plus S plus 7. Again, if you factor the bottom, I'm going to cheat there. If you factor the bottom, you end up with S plus 7 over S plus 0.5 minus 2.6i. S plus 0.5 plus 2.6i. Which means I can rewrite that as K over s plus 0.5 minus 2.6i plus k conjugate 
s plus 0.5 plus 2.6i. Now let me find k. To find k, k is going to be, I'm going to multiply vs by this one times vs, which is s plus 7 over this whole mess. And notice this cancels that. So k is going to be s plus 7 over s plus 0.5 plus 2.6i when i equals what? What makes this one 0? Negative 0.5 plus 2.6i. So if you plug in the math there, what are you going to have? Negative uh, 0.5 plus 2.6i plus a 7 on the top over negative 0.5 plus 2.6i plus 0.5 plus 2.6i. And if you go to your calculator there, and you plug in the numbers where's my calculator here let's see what my calculator says the answer is I found my calculator here we go uh, parentheses that's 6.5 on the top, uh, 6.5 plus 2.6i divided by, let's look at the bottom, 2 point, that's 5.2i, parentheses 5.2i, up oh, 2i, not 2, 2i, where's the i? There we go, close parentheses. And I came up with an answer of 1.35 angle negative 68 degrees. So if that's my answer, if I did all the right stuff, so I know what my answer, this is your A and that's your theta. So V as a function of time is going to be two times A, E to the minus alpha T, cosine beta T, plus theta. This is my alpha. This is my beta. No, no minus, just the number. This is my A. And this is my theta. So it's 2 times 1.35. That's what? 2.7. E to the minus. Alpha. Alpha is 0.5 cosine beta, beta is 2.6 minus the 68 degrees u sub t. And that's the end of it.